Okay, so we want to look at the one parameter linear least squares model. So this model is assuming that we have some random variable y that is uh, we can predict from uh, x. Now I, x is not random in this case, so we've got beta times x. But then the randomness comes from an error term where this error term is distributed. Um, typically, we say normal. I guess it, it um, well, for the, the later analysis, it would need to be normal. So, so we'll just say normal uh, zero sigma. So it's got a constant variance and a mean of zero. Okay, so um, with that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, what we want to do, just a minute, I'm coughing a bit here, so let me pause. Sorry about that, had some, uh, something stuck in the back of my throat. So uh, uh, we have, well, this Y, and, and typically what we want to do is we want to estimate beta. And so that estimate, we'll just go ahead and say right now, we're going to get that estimate from taking the sum uh, of observed uh, x, y, uh, divided by the sum of the x, i squared, the observed uh, values. And, and so, um, let's just look at this beta hat and then we'll we'll look at how we get this uh get this formula but um uh let's look at the expected value of beta hat so the expected value of beta hat is um equal to uh the expected value of um, this uh, uh, sum here, so sum of the xi, and then times our uh, yi, our, our uh, random variable y, um, divided by the sum of the xi squared. Okay. And so that, I can take the expected value inside all these sums. Now the sum on the bottom is just a constant. And so what I have is the sum of the xi's times the expected value of the yi's um, divided by the sum of the xi squared. Now, but the expected value of the yi's, uh, again, given this model up here, is just uh, beta times xi because the expected value of uh, sigma is zero. So but we'll start with the sum of the xi times um, beta xi uh, plus the expected value of each uh, epsilon i, uh, like that, uh, all divided by the sum of the xi squared. Uh, but again, this is zero uh, here, so we just get uh, the sum of the beta xi squared over the sum of the xi squared. And so we factor out the beta and we just get beta. And so we see that um, our beta hat here is um, an unbiased uh, estimator. Of beta. Okay, so we've got an unbiased estimator. Um, 
Now, uh, let's see, I think, um, let's look at, uh, then, now let's look into the variance. So we've got the uh, beta hat, we've got this estimate beta hat. Now let's look into the variance of, of this thing. So uh, we've got since beta is uh, the sum of the uh, xi, yi over, whoops, over uh, the sum of the xi squared. Well, the yi are the, are the uh, uh, random variable here. And, and so um, we can write this as this is... Uh, just x1 over the sum of the xi squared times y1 plus x2 over the sum of the xi squared times y2 plus all the way out to yn. So we've got xn uh, over that sum of the xi squared yn. So you see from our... Uh, um, theorems on variance, we have that the variance of uh, beta then is um, uh, the sum of the xi uh, over the sum of the xi squared squared um, times sigma squared, the variance of the y's. And because these are, you know, we assume all these y's uh, just have that same variance of sigma uh, squared. And, and so we just take the sum of the squares of these coefficients here. And, you know, that's our, our theorems on, um, sums of random variables and and so we get the sigma squared well so then uh if we're going to get a, a try to estimate a standard error so the standard error of our beta hat we would compute oh well i didn't simplify here uh so notice uh, so let me get rid of the standard error Forgot to simplify. Um, so if we want to simplify this thing, right, this is just a constant down here. And so we get the sum of the xi uh, squared over the sum of the xi squared squared times sigma squared. And so we just get sigma squared over the sum of the xi squared. So there's our variance simplified. And so if I want the standard error on my beta hat, what I would do is um, get the uh, standard error of the, of the y's. So I would take the square root of s squared over the sum of the xi squared. And so we just get s over the square root of the sum of the xi squared. So there's our standard error. And so then our confidence interval not confidence interval, confidence interval is um, our beta hat plus or minus uh, our t alpha over 2, um, s over the square root of the sum of the xi squared. So we can get our confidence interval that way. Okay, so we have everything except the derivation of uh, beta hat. And, and so... Um, uh, what we the reason we call this least squares so our derivation of 
theta here. Um, well, what we want to do is uh, we want to minimize over our choices of beta um, the sum of the differences are yi minus possible betas times xi, since that's our model. Uh, maybe we should go hat here on these squared. So this is just a, a function of one variable beta hat uh, from our data. And, and so I just need to take the derivative with respect to beta hat and set it equal to zero. So to do that, I'll get the sum and uh, I'll bring down the two times yi minus beta hat xi. Uh, but then I've got the chain rule, so I need to multiply by the minus xi inside times that's multiplying that beta hat. And so I'll get uh, minus xi like that. And I need to set that equal to zero. Um, so I can take out the negative uh, and the two. And so I have negative two times the sum of xi y i and then um, plus well oops I got negative two there so I'll just leave it like that and so uh, if I took that I still have the minus um, uh, beta hat xi squared equals zero um, and so then I get that beta hat xi squared, the sum of that is equal to the sum of the xi yi. Uh, factor out the beta hat and sum of xi squared equals the sum of the xi yi. And so then beta hat is the sum of the xi yi over the sum of the xi squared. And so um, that's one way to get those. Um, so that's using uh, calculus. Now you can also use linear algebra. Uh, you need to, to do it as a, a projection and so forth, but um, but it's interesting you can you, you can get this beta hat if you if you think of um well, what i would like is i would you know so uh from linear algebra you know uh, what i just like to do is to find um beta hat times x1 equals y1 that i can do i just divide both sides by x1 but I'd also like to find that same beta hat is uh, x2, y2. Oh, now I have a problem because I most likely can't find a single beta hat that fits both of those. And, of course, that goes all the way down to uh, beta hat xn, yn. And um, so, yeah, we don't stand a chance of, uh, of solving this thing. Um, but now if I, you know, if I call that the vector X, uh, which is the, um, uh, vertical vector there, so a column vector, times the constant beta hat equals Y, the vector of the Y's, um, so if I take that vector equation, but then I multiply through by x transpose on both sides. So x transpose x times beta hat equals x transpose times y. Um, then x transpose x, because x was a column vector, that's just a real number. 
So I can divide by that now, and I get beta hat equals x transpose y over x transpose x. Uh, this is called a normal equation. And notice that this is indeed our solution, because the way I would compute these would be that uh, I would take, you know, x1, y1 plus x2, y2 up to xn, yn divided by, and on the bottom be x1, x2 plus x, oops, x1, x1, sorry, uh, uh, x2, x2 plus all the way to xn, xn. And so that is the sum of the xi, yi over the sum of the xi squared. So our solution. So uh, it's interesting if you, if you think of it as the linear algebra problem of, you know, just trying to solve this, this vector equation here, um, which you likely can't solve, but then you say, well, could solve this if I just multiplied through by x transpose. Um, you know, here it, it, you, you see no reason to use x transpose other than eh, it would be convenient. Um, and as long as at least one of these x's is non-zero, um, then x transpose x is non-zero. Uh, you know, that would be, I guess, one reason to use x transpose as opposed to any other vector. Um, but, uh, you know, um, you can show um, using linear algebra and projections that this is indeed uh, the, uh, the solution you want to get. Um, but here, yeah, it just looks like a, a judicious choice just to make sure I can do it. And, uh, and so, okay, I do it and I get this answer, but, you know, with calculus, we saw, yep, this is the minimizer. And, and so we can get that answer that way, but you can kind of see it through matrices this way. So that's our beta, uh, our beta hat for a one parameter model. And we can, you know, we can see that we have a confidence interval here. And um, uh, and oh, the other thing we did was uh, point out that it was the unbiased estimate. One parameter model uh, for a linear least squares problem.